Power systems might not be one of the most interesting parts of a satellite, but without solutions for reliably storing, generating, and delivering electrical energy to all the essential electrical devices, a satellite would be rendered useless. To make sure this doesn't happen, Alna Smitchens and myself, Andrew Buckingham, have been working on the initial design and testing of the mechanical and electrical aspects of a power system for the HuskySat 2 project this year. As I joined the Husky Satellite Lab this fall, we needed to create a physical solar panel to test our circuits with. To save money, I was tasked with creating a test panel from cracked and broken solar cells. After finding a source for these cells, soldering them together with tabbing wire and a few bypass diodes, and very unceremoniously taping them to a sheet of cardboard, we had a very basic solar panel capable of generating a few watts in full sunlight. This panel was used to test a circuit employing a technique called maximum power point tracking to efficiently use the power from the panel to charge a battery. This circuit was based on an analog devices article and built this winter. After troubleshooting some problems with bad solder connections and the use of the wrong kind of diode, the design performed well and was able to charge a battery in conjunction with the test panel. Moving forward into spring quarter, I've been working on designing a PCB to handle power distribution, power monitoring, overcurrent and short circuit protection, battery balancing, and battery charging using the previously tested maximum power point tracking technique. I've just finished the design over this past week and will be working on ordering, assembling, and testing all of the parts through the end of the quarter and into summer. In the near future, we will be constructing a more advanced integrated prototype, incorporating the latest versions of the power system electronics together with our mechanical design for the test stand solar array. The test stand solar array will consist of low-cost consumer-grade solar cells rather than space-grade ones for a lower total cost. However, it will still fit into a CubeSat context in terms of deployment and structure. The array will deploy from a stowed position to an extended position autonomously using actuators without mechanical human intervention. The goals of this array are to 1. Generate experience in integrating electromechanical systems in a CubeSat context. 2. Allow real-world testing of the power electronics. 3. Provide a first structural iteration for the flight solar array, including testing solar cell mounting, wiring, vibration resistance, and deployment systems. And 4. Providing a functional system within the context of a flat sat or test stand satellite. Our latest iteration, to be constructed in the coming months, has an emphasis on mechanical simplicity, manufacturability, low cost, and ease of integration. Rather than necessarily being space grade in all regards at this time, for example it uses off-the-shelf components not rated for vacuum exposure, this design serves as a testing ground where the cost of failure is low, both financially and in engineering time. We are looking forward to constructing a physical prototype soon, bringing together our electrical and mechanical development into a real, testable system.